Okay, so, and now, what I was trying to say there is that there are ways by which you overcome the threat of procrastination. Now, in the last previous talk, I've mentioned some factors by which you consider overcoming procrastination. Now, I said that you must get over the feelings of intimidation. You know what? In the feeling of intimidation is feeling intimidated by the superior, by those who have been in the very field, in the very game that you want to join. So you can overcome, you know, that procrastinating due to your feelings of intimidation. So you need to overcome the feelings of intimidation and you will not postpone every time what you are to do. Then number two, I mentioned that you must quench the thirst for validation. Why? Because a lot of people, they are gifted, they have the talent, they have the idea, they have the business acumen, but they want to get validation by people before they can bring themselves out to say, this is who I am, this is my purpose, this is what I want to do. So you must get over, you must quench that thirst for validation. Because why do you need to quench the, the thirst for validation is because, you know, where you have too many opinions, that seems to, you know, uh, derail your purpose. So once you are set, you take one or two advice from your models, from your advisors, you don't need too many people to validate the purpose for which you have identified. You know, having that self-awareness, you will not procrastinate what you are to do in season and and in time and season, more or less. Then I also mentioned that you can overcome procrastination, uh, that you must be aware of excessive self-worth. And that's what I want to talk about today. This approach to overcome the threat of procrastination it has been scientifically proven. And this self-theory Self-worth theory helps to alleviate procrastinating the time to get something done, the time to launch out certain things. So I'm going to be talking about this self-worth, which is your perceived self-value, your perceived competency, your ability, the conscious of the consciousness of your accomplishment, both past and present. Reliance on your self-ability and perfection. These are your self-worth. These are your self-worth. These are your perceived value. And this th self-theory, self-worth theory, is a research-based psychological study that I came across during my research on procrastination, and I've really loved it. And the study explains a self-theory of achievement and motivation, that they are factors in understanding and overcoming procrastination with aggravated, conflicting motivations. And that is what I want to explain and adapt it into my talk as to help um, entrepreneurs, leaders who have excessive self-worth, who believe that they have accomplished so much and whatsoever they want to do must be perfect. And you find out that if the environment does not guarantee the performance, if the environment or the situation that they are does not, you know, give them the enough confidence, they may postpone what they want to do. They may postpone a new idea. They may, they may put forward or postpone uh, the, pro uh, the, 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 the adventure that is very key to the organization because they want all things to be perfect before they do it. And it tends to 
to be a procrastinating when we change dates, when we move things forward because we want certain things to be in place, just because of who we are in the society, who we are in business, or perhaps because we are uh, achievers. And therefore, whatsoever we want to do, whatsoever new concept, the new ideas, the new purpose we have found, we want everything to be perfect before we can launch it out. And that can lead you to procrastinate. And that is what this self-worth theory of motivation that I found out to be useful in my talk. And that's why I want to share from that. I want to speak from that. So I have embraced the, the theory I mean, to explain how we can overcome procrastination as it occurs among business leaders, uh, successful entrepreneurs. This theory was researched by a professor at the UC Berkeley in the United States a University. And in that department, which of course is the Department of Psychology, this professor came up with this theory as to explain uh, the human reaction in certain situations and when they are in sort of a conflicting moment. And the theory was amplified by a, another a senior associate director at uh, Princeton University by the name of Dominic Vorge, who is a coach to many students in university and helping them through their studies. And he uses this to teach and to get them out of procrastinating their studies and their, um, their project. So I found it to be useful because it also happens to us and uh, several other people, several other achievers, that the self-worth theory explains why they find themselves in two conflicting matters. The matters of success and the matters of failure. Now, what is it talking about? Let's look at it. The self-worth theory of motivation, it states, it reveals that individuals want to be as capable and perfect at various levels. These individuals, they have a self-perceived performance, knowledge, and they have historical achievements. And this is the self-worth. Historical achievements, accolades, you know, the kind of knowledge that they have. And therefore, it's an assertion of high expectation of oneself. And, of course, the impression of others who knows their position. And this theory proves that despite the success motivation of the individuals, the individuals still become fearful of failure. And therefore, they procrastinate. They procrastinate what is due. They procrastinate what should be done and they put it off either till tomorrow or the following year. Why? Because of self-worth. It becomes excessive when our self-worth, when our past success hinders us from trying out new things. And in as much as we want success, we are also afraid because there are expectations of us in whatsoever we do. There is a standard that is expected of us in whatsoever we do. So this theory tends to, you know, point out about people who feels that there's so much expected of them, they, therefore they cannot do certain things just anyhow. But what I'm trying to say here is that <clears throat> what you are already doing, what you, are, what you have already achieved, it's not about that. But it can be in the way of what you are to do, of what is new, a new idea, a new concept, initiatives that can bring a change 
to the society that can bring a change even to your business and to your finances. So this theory tends to explain that in as much that we want to pursue, we want success, we are motivated for success, at the same time, we have a concern of failure. Therefore, this theory you know, impressed upon me that despite the success motivation of an individual, there is also the concern of failing in that individual. Therefore, it says that there are counterproductive feelings. There are counterproductive feelings which are barriers to ideas, barriers to implementation, barriers to commencement of something due because of this. And that is what we need to take cognizance so that we don't procrastinate what we want to do in this very time of the year because we want all things to be perfect. And I'm trying to use this to get somebody moving. I'm saying this to get somebody, you know, on out there to do what you have set as your goals for this year. We are now in the middle of the year. You cannot afford to wait and be postponing because you want certain arrangements, certain, certain factors to be in place. You need to set out to get certain things done with the available resources. And that is what this self-theory self-worth theory as exposed that a lot of people are holding back because they want everything to be in order before they, they can you know set out about their new concept about uh, or the initiatives business initiatives organizational initiatives the theory asserted a linear achievement motivation a linear achievement motivation it, which means that there is the ability, there is a performance level that equals sense of worth. In other words, there is the ability which makes possible certain performance and there is the sense of that worth, the self-worth. These are indicators of achievement. However, the mind of someone with excessive self-worth works the other way around. It might be an entrepreneur, it might be a business leader, I mean, who tends to, wants to have everything made perfect because of who he is, because of what people will say. And you find out that if things are not ready or in the way that the person wants, they postpone things, they leave things, they, in fact, they change their mind often and you find out that you are actually procrastinating. It's not that you are lazy. You are just procrastinating. You are having a fear of failure. And so, this theory ex exposes the minds of an average person with self, excessive self-worth. Whereby, you know, people with self world they place their performance according according to their ability in other words they believe that their performance their result depends on their ability and that is what equals the self worth so this study find out that it becomes a way of protecting self-image for people with excessive self-worth. When they believe that whatever ever they have to do is going to depend on their ability. It's going to depend on their ability. It's going to depend on their knowledge. That is excessive self-worth. Even though it's a new business, you find out that if, if some people, they believe maybe if they don't have experience, they will not do it. Or they want to believe that whatever they do must reflect their achievement, must reflect, you know, their ability. So they base their performance on their ability rather than their ability for the performance and then 
a self-worth. So this theory really exposed some of the things that we go through and we found out that we ended up not doing anything. We end up not launching our ideas. We do not launch the dream product. Maybe you have a product. For example, somebody may say, okay, look, I have this product I want to sell. And he say, no, I've got the goods, but until I open a boutique before I can sell the goods or the product. You find out that you will never sell those goods. Those goods will remain in the warehouse. But if you consider that you don't need to take a large shopping space, you can actually go through the e-commerce and sell a lot of things online rather than you waiting and saying, I must open a large boutique shop because of who you are. Things have moved. You can actually start selling your product right there online. So I'm just giving you an example that you may have a new product and you think that you need a boutique, you need a certain location before you can actually sell those things. And I'm saying if you have excessive self-worth, you may procrastinate bringing your product to the market. That's just an example for you. So they believe that um, due to their you know, self, excessive self-worth, they protect themselves, they protect their image. They, it's a fear of failure. When you protect your image excessively because you think that, you know, things might not work. Entrepreneur or leader who tends to avoid failure, often it's due to protection of self-image, which is excessive self-worth. So, what I'm just explaining here, some believe that if all things are not in place, he or she will not put off, will not get into action. So, they put off what is due, they postpone, they delay the new venture. And I think this is this explains the implication of excessive self-worth. And this theory exposes some of the things that people go through. But it's also helping us to know that we, you need to give up something to have something. And that's what I also learned from this. Even though you want to protect your self-worth. So these conflicting motivations, the implication is this. According to this theory, that this self-worth theory of motivation, the motivations becomes a conflicting in the sense that you want success and at the same time, you have the fear of failure. One of the things that happens is that it impacts, sorry about that, it impacts your implementation. <coughs> it impairs your dreams. It impairs you know, your career arrangement, it appears it. Your business trials, your product trials are affected. You often postpone them. Another example is for, let's say, for ministry who want to open a branch or to do an outreach. And you find out that, you know, they want all things to be perfect. Because of the level that the ministry is right now, they cannot just do one thing or the other. They want all things to be perfect. You find that there will always be a delay. There will always be a postponement of what is due. The area they want to penetrate, they establish it or plant a new church, for example. I'm just giving that example for those. A ministry. It's not about the resources but it's about the image of the ministry <clears throat> that tends to say we cannot just do this in that area. All things must be perfect because of who we are, because of our level in the ministry. They will procrastinate. They will procrastinate. So adopting this self-worth theory of motivation to overcome the threat of procrastinating attitude 
so that you can really, you know, um, confront whatever may be going on your inside in terms of the desire for success and the fear of failure. You need to deal with it. And so tonight, as I'm going to finish, we're going to look at how do you use the self-worth theory, which, you know, really, uh, you know, I've, I've seen it as a way to handle procrastinating. It's, I want to say, how do you use this self-worth theory, according to Dominic Vodge? And I'm adding my own note to it. I'm just referencing Dominic um, Forge of Princeton University in America. Now, number one is that the motivation for success and the motivation for failure or fear of failure, rather, must be balanced. It must be balanced because the motivation for success, the motivation of the fear of failure, they can lead to either stagnation and postponement. Postponement. Therefore, you must balance the motivation. You must balance it. You balance your desire for success and the fear of likely failure in that very venture that you are procrastinating. So you balance it, your self-worth and the motivation. Because the fear on the other side of this conflicting motivation, the fear may paralyze your dreams. It may paralyze the vision because of the fear of poor outcomes of what you want to do. Maybe you want to do an event, for example. Maybe you want to do, you want to do an outreach and you already, you want to get souls into the kingdom, but at the same time, you are afraid that it may not work out or the turnout may be poor. So you need to balance it so that your, your vision is not paralyzed. Your vision is not paralyzed. You must find a balance. Also take, for instance, um, you are a perfectionist, which is okay. You are an, an, you know, a professional person, an excellent a business person. You have a particular vision. Maybe is a is a is a is a you want to build like a community center, you want to establish something. You might get caught by this dimension of achievement, and at the same time, you are trying to avoid failure. It will lead to procrastinating, and you may not implement that idea for life. And so, to overcome this, this, this procrastinating, the threat of procrastinating to your dreams and vision, you must be able to balance your desire for success and the fear of failure. You must be able to balance it. The conflicting forces of success and the fear of failure. This fear of failure will become an excuse. And therefore, what the theory says is that you should be able to trade off. You trade off the fear in order for you to have your desired objective. You need to trade off something. So if you want to trade off your, your, your success, desire, fine. Or you trade off the fear of failure. And you get things done. So that's number one. Then number two on how you adopt this concept of self-worth theory. It also says that to overcome your excessive self-worth, you must consider the purpose. You must consider the purpose. Now this theory exposes the, the imbalance that we see, you know, of self-perceived value, you know, self-esteem, self-perceived value, it exposes it. Therefore, you have to prioritize the purpose of the vision. You have to prioritize the purpose of the venture, of the program, of the product, the purpose 
of the outreach, you need to prioritize it. And when you prioritize it, that will gear you up to trade off. So hence, purpose is, is the purpose is your intention. The purpose is your intention. The purpose, you know, is like the why, the why of the concept that you are bringing up. The why of your vision. I've got that in, in my other talk on vision methodology. And when you understand the purpose, when you prioritize your purpose, you will not be afraid of failure. You will not be afraid of failure. You will not procrastinate because you know that you know you prioritize your purpose. Other factors will come. Other things, things can always get improved. You won't have to wait for what you do not have. But what you have is a purpose that is established. You need to just implement. And you will not procrastinate. So prioritize the purpose of what you want to do. Such purpose includes when you are doing things that will benefit other people, not only for revenue increase, not only for financial increase, but the purpose behind what you're doing, if it's what benefits other people, you need to consider that purpose. Like you want to build a community center, if it's that project, you need to understand that it's going to benefit the community. You're building a college or a school, you know that this purpose is for generations to come. Skills development, creativity center, and these are the purpose that should motivate you. And you become fearless, and you will not procrastinate what you want to do as the year gets into the middle. Number three and the final point on how you overcome the threat of procrastination. Now, it says also, number three, that you break into phases. You break into phases what you have envisioned. You break it into phases in order to establish and to properly manage the process, the project, the concept. You need to break it into phases. You know, others can talk about you make a list of to-do lists. We have discussed that in the past. But this self-worth theory of motivation, which exposes that we go through two kinds of, you know, motivation, the motivation for success, and of course the fear of failure. So they are saying here that you should break things into phases you break it into phases and you'll be able to manage it you will not procrastinate when you have broken things into phases than trying to have a whole launch a whole big stuff but you can break things into phases it makes life easier for you it helps your resources and you will not postpone. You will not postpone every time because you are waiting for a huge capital. But in this case, you have broken things into phases whereby you implement with resources accordingly. And that is where I found that this will help you and even help all of us in many things that we do. So we learn to break things into phases and we'll be able to manage it without stress and then along the line you put perfection along the line rather than doing nothing but you can do something with the available resources rather than doing nothing of postponing what is due as it has been said that procrastination is a thief of time and this talk is coming to you at the very time of the year whereby we are now crossing the middle of the year. You need to finalize your goals for the year. You need to finalize certain things that you want to achieve, certain things and projects you want to commence, what you even want to try. You know, there's nothing wrong to try certain things. You know, through trials, people have become perfect. And through failures, they have become better people. You know, so 
<clears throat> is you need to get over procrastinating and you will find yourself on the right foot. You'll find yourself in the right path that your purpose is rather than doing nothing and you achieve nothing. That is not what we want you. We want you to be an achiever. We want you to have a full testimony of this year, 2024. And that's why I'm bringing this talk to you in order to you know, encourage you. I think I've said quite a few things, few points that I want to bring to you today that one of the ways to overcome the threat of procrastination is to be aware of excessive self-worth. A self-worth is what has been researched to be an hindrance, to be um, a way of procrastinating attitude whereby your self-perceived value, your desire for success, also you have the fear of failure. You be, you know, it also exposed to us that you know we de we depend on our ability so much that our performance is dependent on our ability, and that's what gives us the self worth. Rather, the ability that you have brings you into performance and brings you into self worth. However, if you are having that fear, that concern that things might fail because you want everything to be perfect and they are not perfect and you are waiting for one thing to happen, you find out that you will procrastinate. So, self-worth theory, I believe that it explains why we procrastinate. And I want to thank you at this stage. I want to thank you for listening and I hope that you have taken some points from my talk tonight. This has been Abe Adeniba from Shekana Institute, Johannesburg, South South Africa. Thank you so much for listening. And I want you to remind you about our upcoming um, ministry course, Practical Deliverance Ministry, coming up on the 13th of July, 2024. Registration is required and details is on the information and um, we look forward for you to join us all details all contacts are on it and i hope to see you there thank you and god bless you thank you are you ready to deepen your understanding of biblical deliverance join us on july 13 2024 from 8 a.m to 3 p.m for a transformative day training course titled practical deliverance counseling this course is perfect for pastors, lay leaders, ministers, and anyone seeking personal development. Led by Apostle Dr. Henny, with 30 years of ministry experience, you'll learn the fundamentals of biblical pre- and post-deliverance. Registration is just our 470 per person and includes course notes, a certificate of attendance, and refreshments. Register now at www.shakinainstitute.org or contact our director at plus 278-245-69264. Zoom attendance is also welcome. Don't miss this opportunity for growth and empowerment. Sign up today.